It's been over two years since I've shared any new iPad apps with you, and today I'm going to update that with some new ones I've really been loving, and with some old ones which have stuck around either because they've been so good or because the updates that have come to them have been really useful. So let's get into it. First up is a brand new app for me, and it's one which basically inspired this whole video, is D2D Playlist. This is a lo-fi music player which lets you pick a vibe from coffee shop to rainy day to sad songs to like happy songs and pretty much everything in between. And it plays a nice gif alongside it for a really nice kind of overall aesthetic. This has been really useful for me because I'm not overly sure what to listen to while I'm working and this just takes all the four out of it. You do need Apple Music or Spotify for this to connect to to bring all the music in. But once you've got that, it even makes a playlist inside those apps for you to listen to as well, which is really nice. They also have widgets as well, which sit on your home screen and show off the nice kind of aesthetic, or even lets you play, pause, or like a track, which is really useful. There is a free version of this, which is definitely worth checking out, but I ended up paying for the entire thing because I really liked how this works. And it's just a nice addition to have in the office setup as well. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to hit 200K before the year is out. Next on the list is OneTap. OneTap is a copy and paste manager for the iPad, and it's actually an app which I've been looking for for a really long time. Effectively, what it does is allows you to save text, images, and links to the app, and then you can paste those into any other app by going to another keyboard saved into your iPad. This is really useful to somebody like me as a creator because I'm constantly providing my social details and my demographics and all those things to brands and to people and to clients. So being able to access these at one tap rather than going through loads of metrics and trying to find where I've saved them is really useful. And it's also not tied to an app either. So I can send this wherever I'm on Instagram or on email or in a Word document or anything like that. Within the app, you can have folders as well. So you can group things together by business or by link type or by anything like that, which makes it really versatile if you're flicking between loads of different things like I do. Again, this is a paid app and there is a free trial version which is really limited, but it's worth checking out to see if it will be useful for you. But yeah, this one has really sped up everything I do on iPad. Following that is an app called Orion, which came out last year, which effectively lets your iPad turn into an HDMI display for pretty much anything you'd ever want to plug into it. You do need a USB-C capture card for this to work. You can't use any old random cable and you will need a USB-C iPad too. I do have a whole video on how this works, so I'll link it up there if you wanna check it out. But this was really fun to experiment with. I initially used it for a bit of console gaming, which was kind of fun to see on an iPad, but the sky's the limit. You can literally use it for anything. I used it for a while as a camera monitor for these videos, so I had a bigger view of what I was doing. And you can even plug a Mac into it and use it as a screen there if you want to. Fair warning though, there is a little bit of lag, especially with this cheap dongle, but if you buy a more expensive capture card, then the lag is significantly reduced. I also found you could reduce the lag by using better HDMI cables too. But yeah, it's been a really fun app to use and it's got a really nice design to it as well. So definitely check it out. Moving on from there is Final Cut Pro. And honestly, Final Cut Pro on iPad is really easy to dislike. I mean, there's a reason I don't use it to edit these videos, but it does have some really cool features. And the feature that I have been enjoying since it came out is live drawing on videos. You may have seen this in my last video, but this allows you to use the Apple Pencil to literally draw over your video and it will animate in real time over your footage. If you wanted to do something like this before, you'd have to use After Effects and like a drawing pad and all that sort of stuff to get it. But with this, you can just do it straight away. I used it a fair amount in my last video and it's something I'd like to continue using as time goes on. But this just feels like a perfect use of the iPad and Apple Pencil to bring something new to a video edit. I really like it. I don't like how Final Cut is subscription though and it's missing loads of keyboard shortcuts and it can't go full screen on external monitor and you can't go back and forth from Mac and iPad. And yeah, there's loads of stuff I don't like, but for that, it's it's really cool. I can't believe I'm about to talk about Sonic on this channel, but here I am. And this next app is Sonic Mania Plus. And I know this is actually quite an old game at this point, but if you have a Netflix account, which I assume probably a lot of you watching this do, this game is completely free. And Netflix actually has this massive selection of games on iPad and iPhone that are all pretty high quality. And Sonic Mania is one of them. But the reason I picked Sonic Mania is because it's such a simple game to play on touchscreen controls for iPad and for iPhone it just works flawlessly. And not to mention, it's a really beautiful game to play as well. The frame rate is nice and smooth. Everything's nice and responsive. And it harkens back to those old Sonic glory days, which is always something to be excited about. It's a perfect game to pick up and play if you've got a few minutes to burn because you can always get through an act or a zone relatively quickly. 
Moving on from there is Freeform, and this is one of the newer apps that Apple put out over the last few years. And initially, I didn't think this was for me. I've got a note taker and I've got a way of planning stuff. I don't really need something else which does that. But it's actually been really, really good for just fleshing out larger ideas, especially with the infinite canvas. This lets you zoom in and zoom out as far as you'd like to while you're drawing or writing or just planning something. For me, I've started using it to think of product ideas for everything we sell over at Kroku Studio, and I even used it to design a little bit of the studio as well. We're in the middle of building like a little guitar ball and it was nice to just flesh it all out on there. It's also completely free and cloud-based as well. So you can access this on your Mac and everything is exactly the same. It also runs really well on Mac and has all the features, which is usually surprisingly rare to get between iPad and Mac. So I love adding little bits on the Mac and then working on it again on my iPad. It is built for being collaborative with others, but I'm just using it on my own at the moment and I've been really enjoying it over the last six months or so. Okay, moving on to the older apps, which I'm still using at the moment. And first up is Notion. And I've talked about Notion a lot on this channel and I've not made it a secret how much I use and enjoy it. It effectively allows me to plan everything for this channel. But there's one feature of it this year, which I've been using so much, and that's the Notion Web Clipper. This allows you to save basically any page online to Notion so you can check it later. So if you're in Safari and you see something that you don't really wanna bookmark, but you might wanna look at it later, you can just hit the share button and then press the Notion button and it will save everything into it. So it will try and bring in pictures and all the information and any links as well. This is built into your iPhone and the iPad version. But if you use Notion on desktop, like I do a lot, you can get the Notion Web Clipper from the Chrome store or the Safari store as well. And it's completely free. This is really, really useful when I'm doing research as well, because a lot of the time I don't want a big stack of bookmarks clogging up my Chrome, but having it all in Notion means I can put all the information out of it and bring it into new pages and things like that and it's been really great i've really enjoyed using notion in this way over the past year or so okay finally to round this video out the last app which i'm still using and i have been using for the past probably three or four years at this point is GoodNotes. And they're now on GoodNotes 6, which I know got a lot of kickback when they moved to the subscription plan and all that sort of thing. But it really is still my favorite note taker out there. It's got a really good sense of physicality, which I think a lot of other note takers don't have. And all of the features that it's been getting recently has been really good. And I really appreciate the fact that it updated to the Apple Pencil Pro new features very quickly. And talking of new features, they've just released Ask GoodNotes, which is effectively an AI built into it. So if you're a student, for instance, and you bring in a textbook, it will analyze that entire textbook and that textbook only. And then you can ask GoodNotes anything about that and it will give you the answers directly from that textbook you're referencing. I'm not a student, but if you are, I can imagine how useful that would be because you'll know you're getting the right answers. It also does other little fun things as well, like you can test you on stuff and you can just search up anything you need in that book. A really, really cool feature, probably not for me, but the fact that it's here just means that GoodNotes keeps getting better and better. And that's generally speaking why I always stay with it. And it's also half the reason why I didn't make the best note-taking app for iPad this year, because nothing's really changed from my thoughts to last year. It's still GoodNotes. I still think it's the best one out there. Anyway, that rounds up this video and all the new apps and some old ones, which I've still really been loving. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. And if you've got any apps which you think I should check out or you think anybody else should check out, leave them in the comments below because I always love to discover new things. And I will see you all in the next one.